the table topics contest at each level. So today I will not only show you the tips and techniques, but I will show you what does it take to win a table topics contest. By the end of this presentation, I'm not going to assure you that you will win a contest, but I can assure you with these techniques, I'm sure you can maybe wow the audience. So before I proceed any further, we should know what areas as a table topic speaker or any contestant when we are going to step into the stage where we are going to be judged as. Now as TMI, Toastmasters International, they judge different parts. So as you can see from the pie chart, this is how you're judged. 55% from your content and 30% from your delivery, 15% from your language. Now this gives you 100% of your marks. So let me break down each and every category, starting off with the content of your table topics answer. Now content, which takes 55%, it is broken down into two, speech development and speech effectiveness. Speech development, which takes 30%, and speech effectiveness, which takes 25%. Let's break that down. Now, speech development. This is the vital key of every table topics answer. Now, if you take a table topics response and usual table topics response, they say it is like a mini speech you're delivering. It requires an opening, a body, and conclusion. Now, the way you respond is really important and how you set up that transition between the opening the body and conclusion is also important how you put your ideas all together compile it and give out a great example great response providing with examples details quotes humor and many more this covers 30 percent of your speech development speech effectiveness which covers 25 percent whatever you said whatever your message you're delivering is it really clear to the audience was your response related to the topic given it's really important that you answer the topic when you answer the topic judges really mark out okay this person answered the topic and they can understand that you have spoken clearly when you speak clearly people will get to understand your ideas and whether it is a very logical reason to understand it so this is what speech effectiveness is all about so this covers up the content of your speech speech development and speech effectiveness now let's move on to delivery. Delivery which covers 30% of your marks and it's broken down into two, physical which is 15% and voice which is 15%. If you take physical, body language, hand gestures, facial expression, the way you use your stage is really, effect, is really important. Now as we are having it virtual, you should be really mindful on your lighting, on your camera, and how you make sure that you are fitting in that video frame of your camera. Because you don't want to show your body language which goes out of your video for a camera, video frame. So make sure that when you're speaking, standing up, and showing your facial expression, make sure the right lighting is there so that when you're showing your facial expression, everyone could see your face. When you're moving your hands or showing your hand gestures, make sure it's visible in the video camera. And when you're moving within the video camera, make sure that you're within that video frame. Voice, was your volume flexible? Were you having the right rate? Were you loud at times? Were you sound? Were your words clearly understood? This is what voice is all about. Now, since contest will be virtual, we should make sure that whatever we're using, whether we're using a laptop mic, whether we're using maybe uh, 
Bluetooth headsets or uh, yeah, Bluetooth headsets where make sure our voice is audible because whatever we speak, we want our viewers to hear what we're speaking. So make sure that your audio is very good, good when it comes to technological aspects. And then language, which covers 15% of your table topic response. Appropriateness of the language, which covers 10%, and correctness, 5%. So if you're taking appropriateness of language, 10%, the choices of words that make your message clear, was it the correct ones? And was the language fit for the occasion? This is about appropriateness and the correctness of language, whether, whether you are using the right grammar or were you using the right present tense, the past tense, simple tense. So this is also a key ingredient for your table topics answer. Now, this is what covers your judging criteria. 100%. So judges look at your content, your delivery and language, which covers 100% of all your marks. Now, that's what we understand as contestants. Now, as contestants, we got to understand what we're judged on. But now let me tell you the techniques and tips to answer a great table topics response. And I'll share my experience as well as we go through them. Now, before preparing for a table topics contest, before the contest, I still remember when before the contest that I took time to brainstorm some topics just before the district uh, semifinals contest, before the final contest, which happened on Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday night, I remember going over hundreds of quotes and topics and questions. I would, mem I would start like go through quotes and just keep few in my head and just try to maybe understand what the quote would mean and try to respond that as like a topic. And then I just went to topics and try questions and topics which would have general meaning. Now, usually now we, what we find in a table topics contest would be general things. For example, I still remember hearing one table topics uh, contest which I attended. Uh, what will you be, what do you think you would like to be? If you join the circus, this was a topic. So it was a general topic. So fellow Toastmasters, it's not always focusing on quotes or sayings. We should also just get our heads out of the brain. We should just break out of the box, look for questions that might trigger about life, about our success, something which general life. Some people would choose topics which are just beyond the box. So you've got to be prepared all over. Be informed on the latest news as well. In latest stories, keep, make sure that you're well informed about latest updates of the world. <laughs> always practice and rehearse. It's not always getting to know how to respond to the topic, but practice and rehearse it. Believe me, every question that I was practicing, I practiced on the mirror. I looked into a mirror. I recorded my, I would ask myself, I would take a topic and start asking myself, how would I respond to it? And then I would look into the mirror and pretend I was speaking to my audience. And when I was looking at the mirror, I was able to enforce and see whether I was implementing hand gestures, facial expression. And I would also record my table topics response, just record it, just to see whether I was audible, well, how was my volume of the rate. And after that, I would also go in front of my loved ones, my parents, my family friends, and also just give them, the, give, let them give me topics and answer a few of them and ask their feedback. So it's always best to practice, practice and practice. Now, tips on how to respond to a topic. Now, when you're on the topic day, there is something that whenever we go to a table topics contest, there's one thing that you must always be aware. First of all, don't panic. When we hear the topic, don't panic at all, fellow Toastmasters. 
listen to each and every word said in the topic and buy some time maybe for 10 seconds to reflect on the topic. Now, when you hear the topic, first of all, take a deep breath. Before you go on stage, take a deep breath, fellow Toastmasters. Clear your mind. And as they call your name, just walk slowly to the top, slowly to the stage. Make sure that you have enough of time to feel comfortable. Go on stage, take a deep breath, and hear the topic. And once the table, once the contest master starts reading out the topic, make sure that you listen to each and every word. A single word can twist a topic's response. A single word can change the definition of a topic. So make sure you listen to each and every single word of the topic so you can clearly understand. And just before you, once the topic is read, don't just jump out straight responding to the topic. Take some time, maybe about five to 10 seconds just to get an idea. How would you open? What would you do? And just click it, click it, click it. Just take your time, buy some time. What I would do just to buy some time, I would just fix my tie, just fix my collar button or just fix my, collar, uh, my sleeves. And then I would start just buying some time before I speak. So then I have a clear thing, okay, what I'm gonna do for the opening, what do you think is a relevant example for this message? And then only I go for it. And as you build up your story, you know that <coughs> what to speak next. next. So take your time and respond. Take about five to 10 seconds to reflect on the topic. Now, this is just a general technique how some Toastmasters would take it upon. They would agree with open by agreeing with the audience, maybe getting the audience agreement. For, for example, they would ask a question to the audience. Do you agree that maybe uh, we should step out of our comfort zone, for example? And then maybe they will present the problem or issue the address. Maybe they'll, they'll present the problem of the topic and then they will give the overall solution. And then they will proceed with what do they think about this solution, how it could help to solve the issue and then call into action. What will they do with the message? Now, this is just a general technique. For me, I have also a technique. What would I do? I would sometimes think of maybe dramatizing myself, opening dramatically, maybe dramatizing a dialogue between my parents or someone with my friends or anyone, and then I will open up. Or I will ask a rhetorical question with the, uh, with the audience, or start off with a quote. But fellow Toastmasters, never open up by reading the topic itself over again. Because fellow Toastmasters, when you read the topic all over again, you're just wasting your time. So make sure when you get the topic, don't repeat the topic. My topic is blah, 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 blah. So don't repeat the topic at your opening. And then when it comes after greeting the audience, define the topic. What do you understand by the topic? And then what do you think is your best idea about the topic? and then enforce your idea with stories, examples, joke, and humor. One amazing factor you can use is stories, personal stories. Why personal stories are effective? Because you can use to play with audience's emotion. And why is it important? Because it could help you use many factors, especially getting you masks for delivery purposes. You can use your facial expression, your vocal variety, your hand gestures. You can score well at delivery and it will make your speech effectiveness. So presenting a great example is really important. It will also give you an edge from other competitors as well, because a unique story can give a, uh, could inspire the audience and give a unique answer than the other competitors. And then when you end it, you should call into action what you want the audience to get from this and what do you think is the true meaning of the topic. So this is a general technique. So, this is when 
if you are not familiar with the topic. Now I'm a single boy, a single, uh, single in a relationship, and I was given a few weeks back about what would be the relationship advice you would give to husbands, and I was completely clueless because I have never experienced such thing. So I bridged. I use this technique called bridging, where you try to connect what you know to the unknown. So I used the example of my parents to connect to something that I was completely unaware of. And guess what? I was able to connect the audience and deliver a wonderful response. So fellow Toastmasters, this is another technique. If you cannot, you're not totally unfamiliar, try to see what's the connection, what you're familiar of, and connect it with the unfamiliar, causing that bridge. Moderator. This is another technique. A uh, technique uh, response where you're talking uh, between, for it and against it. For example, if your topic was like, say, uh, is social media really important in society? We can talk the good points about social media and then the bad points about social media. This is what moderator is all about. He's not taking any side of the conversation. He's talking both sides and then present it with an example. So this is what a moderator response is. And then playing the devil's advocate. Now devil advocate is quite strange in, uh, is a quite, it's not being used oftenly because sometimes you're, it depends on the topic you're given. It is actually completely arguing on the topic. This is a technique which not everyone use because sometimes the topics are given in a way that you have to totally agree with the topic. But if there's a chance that you can argue, go for it, devil advocate. But there are some topics where you cannot answer, use this devil advocate. At some scenarios, you can use it. So it's a, it's a rare uh, the way of responding to a topic. Everyone loves a mystery. Now, when it comes to table topics or even giving a prepared speech, remember that a mystery is amazing. Sometimes when you're building real response, you can give the audience to answer your question. Maybe you can leave a question in the audience's heads or whatever. For example, if you were given a question whether how you can change the world, and as you were building up, you told, okay, now this is the way I want to change the world. And then finally you end up, this is how I want to change the world. How about you, Philotos, uh, my dear audience? How do you think you would love to change the world? Or you can give a suspense. As you're building a story, you can give a suspense, give a twist, give a shock. Because when you do that, you can give a, keep a mind to your audience that, Everyone loves a mystery. Literally, everyone loves a mystery. Keep a question, keep an open and mystery, even in your story, so that you create that suspense. If everything fails. At times, we come at that moment where we do not know what to say. We do not know what to respond. So what do you do? Just try to... What I did once was um, in a contest, and uh, fortunately, I became third place. I didn't know how, but I was completely shocked on how to, I was completely clueless on how to respond to this topic. So what I did was I just remember the topic and I took one single word, which was quite connecting the whole topic together. And that topic was the word knowledge. So I took that word knowledge and I started to talk upon it. And slowly I found it that I was connecting it slowly to the topic, but not really. But I was able to score well on my delivery because I presented a great delivery and my language was well. Sometimes you might not be able to score well at content, but try to focus on that <laughs> scoring at delivery and the language as well. So that maybe you can get a chance. Maybe you might have that edge between the competitors. So for Toastmasters, these are just a few techniques how to prepare yourself for table topics, brainstorm a list of table topics, 
have a strategy how your table topic response is going to be and how would you open how would your body be what is the necessary factors that must be in a body and what how will you wrap up your conclusion rehearse a table topic response so this is all i have and if anyone has any questions please i feel uh, feel free to ask them out please <laughs> Does anyone has any questions? I think if I'm that so, uh, I think I'm so clear, isn't it? Anybody has question? I guess not. I so, think everyone's perfect. Yes. So <laughs> I think that was okay. Great. So uh, thank you so much. One. Yes, yes, yes. To Are you single or married? <laughs> oh, okay, that's uh, that's on the topic. <laughs> still single, still single. Thank you, thank you. Okay, there was right, no one uh, asked question from you, so that's why I asked question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think that's uh, great. So thank you for this opportunity, and I hand over the control of the virtual platform back to our Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Sassy Waragoda. We learn a lot from you, and hopefully, I won't. Um, what do you call this? Uh, next time, I'll be able to answer the table topic uh, question easily and smoothly. Hopefully, with your technique and uh, with your knowledge shared to us tonight, I think it will. Be, it it's possible, inshallah. So let's proceed with our. Next part of our agenda, the better thinking session, the table topic, which will be conducted by our president of Toastmaster, uh, Horizon Toastmasters Club, no other than Toastmaster Omar Farouk Awan. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. Thank you, Toastmaster Idris. What a lovely presentation of this. I love that Toastmaster Sassy shared. Big round of applause to Sassy for great presentation, great insight and techniques. So now we will move on to testing those texts. We move on to the unprepared speech session. And let's see how we can implement those techniques into our. So the, to, to the right, next theme is proverbs. Proverbs with you, and you had to on them and whatever. And so, time of the table topics is one to two minutes, one minute green, one and a half minute it will be yellow, two minutes it will be red, and 30 seconds. So, let's begin. I will be sharing my screen. Okay, I will be. Calling first person my first victim. Okay, let's begin with Martin. Martin. Yep. Can you see me? Choose. Oh, yes, I can see. Ooh, I see some. Huh? Yes. Okay. First one. Hard. Choose any uh, hard. hard. Okay, you want hard. So your topic is sense makes the heart grow. Repeat. It makes the heart go fonder. Over to you, Tosmos much. You don't know what you have until you lose it. Yeah. And Mr. Table Topics Masters, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. And uh, when you don't know what you have until you lose it, it's the same as when you have something and you are going to remind, for example, if you absence or being 
so far one place to the other one makes the heart to grow bigger. Of course, it would be better if you have the, your loved one near to you, but if it's not possible, try at least to call or we have many ways to be in touch. So I think that we must not wait to have someone so far away to make love grow, to grow. Because what about like one, one of my aunts that I really like, like her, but she stayed one time, she's 88 years old. And she told me, oh, Martin, I dreamed that you asked, asked me for marriage. And I said, wow, what? one old woman, 88 years old, that she dreamed that I asked her for marriage. And I said, she must be crazy. Or she's, now she's <laughs> out of her mind. But she was a single person all her life. And she was not a crazy woman that was with this boyfriend and that boyfriend and all that one. No, she doesn't have a boyfriend. Or, and she's not going to have it because she's 88 years old. So I encourage all of you not to make your love or to ha your heart to grow when you are in an absence or so far one from other one. It's better to be in touch and begin to grow your relationships better instead of just waiting for something so far away and at the end think, at the end I mean for my aunt, at the end say, oh, I love you. No, no, no. Take advantage right now. Back to you. Wonderful answer, Toastmaster Martin. So with this, we will move on next and have a Toastmaster Ak with us. Toastmaster Visak. Okay, so we can move on to Toastmaster Anushi. You want to try? Yeah. Okay, to choose any of these um, number six clothes. Clothes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So your pick is do not make the men. I'll repeat, clothes do not make them. Over to you. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster and my dear Gains. Clothes do not make men, but definitely makes women. Perfect. Maybe the men, they don't want that clothes, but we want. I love clothes. That's why I choose. I can have full wardrobe with the clothes again and again, because I don't want few things to repeat. That is my first thing. I don't want to repeat. So I want a new clothes. Maybe men, they don't want to re all these things, but I want. So women want clothes. Okay. The second thing, I want a variety in a texture. I want a silk and cotton and chiffon and all the other stuff. Maybe men can live with one thing, but I want to explore here a different thing. As they are exploring in a different area for many people. For me, for clothes, I want to go for a variety. As they are going for a variety, huh? with the girls, but not for me, that area. So these are the two first, my priorities, because of that, I want clothes. Maybe as I again and again repeating, men, they don't want, but women's, we want clothes. Huh. Now the third important and most important thing, why we need a clothes. Clothes is actually talking about your personality. What kind of a clothes you are wearing? It's not you have to supposed to wear a very classy or very costly clothes, but it should be a decent and show your personality. So I feel that clothes is very important. It's uh, we just now we learn it's your body language, it's your vocal variety, it's your content. Without all these things, 
first is your appearance that's what i believe and clothes is going to show all these things so men maybe you don't want clothes so give your salary to all of your women they can use it to buy maximum clothes over to you table topic master thank you a wonderful and humorous reply i loved it now we will move on to the another topic and that will be a toss master vikram is there yeah hi uma i'm here oh yes other than heart and clothes you have to choose any of them what you'll choose heart and clothes are gone so let's say grass grass oh yeah you get so gra the grass is always greener on the other side i'll repeat the grass is always greener on the other side toss master vikram over to you okay uh i remember a story from my college time there was a time we have to do a video shoot for our project so in that we thought of many ideas that we could do this do that but randomly we are sitting on the bench of a bus stand and we saw one guy uh, who is challenged he doesn't have Uh, i mean how do you feel like i mean you don't have like there are a lot of things that you uh, you want to do but you never have came across to do it he said if and he looked at the other people who are going for run who are walking he looked at them and he uh, he told us that uh, uh, if i had legs then i could have done all those things and say okay that's a good idea then the next day we met one guy who is running on the uh, stadium then we asked him we met he was he don't doesn't have leg and as left i'm running then i can say okay then we move to a cyclist we asked him okay the cycling is good part uh, it's a good part of the exercise and it's good but uh, do you have anything that you regret this if i have got a motorcycle then it would be good then we went to motorcyclist then we asked him i mean are you happy with your motorcycle then he said if i have a car then it would be much better then we went to a guy who is having a motor car when we asked him are you happy because you have a leg you can run and uh, you may not have a cycle or mo a motorcycle but you have a car are you happy then he looked at the same guy who is not having the leg and same standing on the bus he said look at that guy how happy and content he is but i am not that much happy though i have the car but i am not happy better than us instead of being happy with what we have so always the grass is greener from the other side because as we say the mountain which is far looks beautiful but we don't never recognize the mountain we are on right now thanks and over to you umar oh wonderful you uh, toastmaster vikram you applied the technique of storytelling huh? so great great oh, wonderful it and now we can have with us toastmaster sir toastmaster sajid are you there okay no issues we can have toastmaster and we can have toastmaster pragya do you yeah hi so you can try other than hard grass and clothes try any one i'll go for intention oh you have chosen the hardest one The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I'll repeat: the road paved with good in intentions. Over to you, to Master Pragya. Thank you, Table Topic Master. Intentions. Good or bad? Uh, 
that depends on our judgments and also the judgment of others who say i don't agree to it based on all that we all have heard story doing bad will take you to hell but what i truly believe in is good or bad intentions give their remarks over here in this world hell or heaven please leave them apart for the devil and the angels they are truly to decide what's there but when it comes to road the only hell that we create is in this world when we have wrong intentions towards others when we hurt feeling when we hurt emotions and when we go on negativity that hell is created here in our mind because negative intentions will only and only affect us and not others so if you really want to create a hell or a heaven it will always be in our mind and these intentions are just a way a path to decide of what you want to create or what i want to create in my own mind having positive emotions good intentions towards somebody else will give a feel good to me it will keep me happy and wake me up with a smile every morning creating a heaven for me in my mind my heart and my body on the other hand having those bad intentions i will wake up every morning with negativity with frustration anger and so much more and it will only pave way to a hell in my own mind so i hope you 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 decide whether you want to create a heaven or hell for you what are your answer to as usual you are quite natural at it table topics now we have with us next we will be choosing will be there we can have toastmaster diana do you want let's give you the topic umar uh, diana yes president umar yes you called me yes which will, yes you choose our uh, heart us and clothes i beg your pardon you choose you will get the table the sorry i have to beg you another pardon you you the what's broke off yes you're saying table topics uh, you have to choose any yes. item of um, choose other grass you may choose a number except heart grass clothes for intentions so number 3 clothes 5 6 is taken clothes is oh okay i've seen number 6 grass number 6 number 6 is done grass i said grass number 2 Gra- gra- grass is done oh dear okay so which one have you said they've not taken yet tough vessel things mild enemies means tough tough oh you get a even then huh? so when the going gets tough or tough get going i'll repeat when the going get the tough get going so okay. sir diana thank you very much it's a when they going get when they going get stuff only the tough get going this is a situation like just we've been in right now nobody expected coronavirus to put us in the house to some of us it felt like the usual news that happens whereby you hear another a country 
having problems and you just continue to watch out in the news to see how the country is dealing with the situation at hand. With this flu that got into place, made things very tough. One thing we had it in China, and the next thing we know, it is all over the world. Surely, when the going gets tough, the tough gets gone. Now, when this spread out throughout the world, everybody remembered to wake up and tighten up the bolts in their country. We've had about airports being closed. This has never happened for my lifetime, to hear that the airports are closed in one country, in another, and it's the whole world. Nobody's moving. When the tough gets going, hmm, you won't believe it. Countries have been in the house, people in the, have been in the houses for such a long time in all places of the world. But today, as we see things going on, we can see that it is those who have been resilient in, this, in these times are really moving on. The medical people who have been there for the people, for the others, are in position to keep going despite losing loved ones in the front battle. And with this, I can only say, the going gets, when the going gets tough, only the tough get going. Back to you, Toastmaster Omar. Wonderfully answered, Toastmaster Diana. Now we can have Rehana. Rehana is not there. Toastmaster and Tasamba. Um, yes, President Umar. Yes, you have to choose any of the items from the house of clothes and, and intentions. One, clothes. two, three, you don't cannot choose. Clothes is done. Clothes is done. So, which one can I choose? Four, five, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm trying to get it. Okay. Four. Okay. Four. Vessel. Uh, four. You will choose four, huh? Okay. Yes, four vessel. Yes, four. Okay. An, an empty vessel makes most noise. I read empty vessel makes most noise. Toastmaster N. Yes. Uh, it has been said that there are vessels unto honor and vessels unto dishonor. We shall find out, is, is, it, is it the empty vessels that are of honor or the ones that are of dishonor? One time I went to attend a swimming lesson. It was my first time to get into a swimming pool. First my friends went in, and they were instructed, and they went out so, you know, qu quite comfortably. When it was my turn to get into the pool, I don't know what happened, but I just found the water all around me, and I shouted so, so much, until my instructor actually got scared. The question was, what was that noise all about? Was it that in me, there was emptiness, like we've said, empty vessels make more noise. Well, I do not want, because it was me, I do not want to think so. But the truth, when I went back and reflected why everybody else did not make noise and I made such great noise, there was emptiness in me regarding swimming. 
I hadn't been given the tips. I didn't know what to expect. So I would like to say that just like in the physical, the empty tins tend to make more noise. Sometimes it's we, the owners of the vessels, do have we given have we given them have we filled them or have we left them empty if we leave them empty then we suddenly going we are suddenly going to let them make a lot of noise it's up to us to give honor or dishonor to our vessel by filling them and never leaving them empty over to you toastmaster thank you wonderful answer toastmaster and and everybody can hear me clearly Yes. Okay. Next up, we can have uh, Ahmed. Does Mr. Ahmed? I think Ahmed will have. But yes. Get I'm in. here. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Who's from five, seven, eight, and nine. Choose one. Five, seven, eight, and eight, nine. Eight. eight. I love enemies. <laughs> you can tell if possible. Uh, wait one minute. Uh, close it. So your the topic is okay. Your friends. I'll repeat. Keep you your close friends and close. Your enemy closer. Yes. That's not that the a very interesting uh, line. Keep your uh, friends close and your enemies closer. Well, uh, in life, the most important you are the friend who are close to you to your heart when you're happy and especially when when you're sad they're really close to you and they make you happy they make you smile and they make you laugh but at times come when in a man or in a woman's life the enemies become more important they, they are always ready to hurt you whatsoever and they don't miss a single chance so you have to be ready there there will be many uh, circumstances in life they won't be showing you that they are against you but deep down in their heart there will be the hate and uh, you know uh, bad feelings for for you and they will be ready to hurt you so you have to be close to them to know them to understand them and to know what's coming next towards you like you have to be alert and aware and uh, won't, won't be like a pigeon. It's busy in, you know, ready to eat him. Thank you. Wonderful answer to that. With this, we are going to end that table topic session. It was wonderful responses for everybody and they stepped up and they shared their insights and all i would like to ask the timer to present the timer's report for each and every contestant toastmaster mohammad hasan kindly share the timer's report <clears throat> thank you toastmaster umar farooq uh, the timer's report is this uh, toastmaster martin uh, took 2 minutes 20 seconds toastmaster anushi sharma took 2 minutes 17 seconds guest vikram took 2 minutes 20 seconds uh, Toastmaster Pragya took 2 minutes 19 seconds. Toastmaster Nelvada Diana took 2 minutes 14 seconds. 
टोस्टमास्टर एन तसम्बा टुक टू मिनट सिक्सटीन सेकेंड टोस्ट मास्टर अहमद अब्दुल्ला टुक वन मिनट फिफ्टी एट सेकेंड्स क्वालिफाई फॉर द वोटिंग थैंक यू ऑल आर क्वालिफाइड ओके सो यू कैन ऑल कास्ट योर वोट्स एंड थ्रू प्राइवेट चैट टू आवर वोट काउंटर इज आल्सो द टोस्ट मास्टर मोहम्मद हसन एंड ही विल बी आई थिंक टोस्ट मास्टर मोहम्मद हसन यू कैन शेयर द नेम्स ऑफ द अटेंडेंट्स इन द चैट बॉक्स आल्सो फॉर द मेंबर्स एंड गेस्ट टू वोट विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू hand over the virtual lectern back to our toast master of the day toast master sakurat thank you so much our president toast master omar farooq for the very innovative session of our table topic uh, tonight so let's proceed with our evaluation before we proceed let me introduce to you our tt evaluator for tonight he is a humorous champion and he is environmentalist he loves biology and also ocean and currently he is studying in university of the philippines as doctor of communication please help me welcome my very good friend toastmaster mark thank you so Lamila. much toastmaster of the evening oh my gosh seven speaker outstanding outstanding speech on the spot speech is very hard for uh, for me actually but i will try my best to give you this evaluation feedback constructively all right the first speaker was toastmaster martin toastmaster martin the topic is absence make the heart grow fonder this means that when people love are not with us we love them even more isn't it toastmaster one thing i love with you is that your voice modulation binds the audience properly and you properly express your emotions where in your stakeholders connect it directly congratulations for that and also you greatly gave us an example of your experiences where in you are great platform to pin up your experiences were in a great platform to connect with the audience my suggestion is that you need to focus on your four corners of virtual screen determine your position and give emphasis strong emotions since we are on a digital mediated interface where in it is very hard to mediate emotions amazing answer toastmaster martin Next is Toastmaster Anoshri. Where is Toastmaster Anoshri? All right, she is there. Clothes do not make the man. Toastmaster Anoshri, you cannot judge a man's character based on his clothing and appearance. It is what it is behind the man that is his character that really matters. Toastmaster Anoshri, gestures make you a better speaker, wherein you excellently deliver. The movement draws attention to what you're saying and draws attention to the important part of your speech. You emphasize certain points, but I think you literally explain this proverb in a way that everybody can grasp and understand it well. But I want you to dig more on the meaning behind those proverbs. that is your big edge as a communicator next is toastmaster bikram toastmaster bikram you are here all right here toastmaster bikram your topic was the grass is always greener on the other side toastmaster bikram when someone is not satisfied with their own lack in life and always assumes that there are better things in other places you have shown confidence toastmaster vikram you have shown confidence self reflection answering the topic you have given i love you attack the topic by giving a story of a third person a third person were in an effective way to reflect on the topic even though you have a small amount of time your speech becomes more interesting toastmaster akram because this idiom encapsulates the human quality of 
always waiting or always wanting something different than what you have right now. My suggestion is to interact effectively by involving others to become an effective participant of your speech. However, you gave us your speech main message, which is the main objective of the table topics. Congratulations, Toastmaster Vikram. Of course, next is Toastmaster Pragya, my favorite. My favorite Toastmaster Pragya, she always won on the table topic uh, session. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. This means that people often intend to do good things, but in fact do not often because they are lazy or weak. Toastmaster Pragya, your mind, your mind is mind, your mind is blowing. You created an answer in your mind directly and constructively. You gave us an ironic words that I like the most from you. You are like a Shakespeare mind. The modulation of your voice, clarity was excellent, very spontaneous. You are a great speaker. Thumbs up that Toastmaster Fragya. Love it. Next is Toastmaster Nalwada. Where is Toastmaster Nalwada? I can see her. I can see her here. I can see Toastmaster Nalwada. All right, Toastmaster Nalwada is here. Your topic eh, was when the going gets tough, only the top gets going. Toastmaster Fragia, I want you to surface this kind of proverbs. When things become very difficult or unpleasant to deal with, people with people with true resolve, determination, or strength of character will take action and find some means to continue carrying on. Toastmaster Nawalda, you emphasize this important message to deal with tough situation during this time. All in all, you bring clarity in your speech and to our traditions of communications. Many things that you can fairly easily to improve your communication skills and ensure that you are able to transmit and receive information effectively. However, Toastmaster Nawalda, I suggest when you speak on a screen, yeah. when you speak on a screen, yeah? When you oh, speak on a screen. Can I request you to, to unmute the, the phone of Toastmaster Ahmad, I think. All right. However, Toastmaster Nawalda, however, I suggest when you speak on a screen, you need to have this ambient light. Because I saw your screen, so I, I saw your face, it's so dark, so that we can also see your emotions in delivering your, spe your speech. You are a great communicator, Toastmaster Nawalda. Next, Toastmaster Anne. Toastmaster Anne, are you here? Ah, uh, yes, Toastmaster Anne is here. An empty vessel makes moist, most noise. All right. This is a very good topic. This means that people who talk a lot about their knowledge, talent, or experiences are often not knowledgeable, talented, or experienced as they claim to be. Toastmaster Anne, you delivered the message very well that life that we are living should be in an humble state. You gave us some ironic examples and experiences. Confidence, fashionable. You give your answer short and sweet. You have successfully painted a picture through storytelling. I love that. You are very creative in speech construction. However, Toastmaster Anne, however, you need also to focus on the consistency, but you are a great you are you, you greatly establish your your what do you call this your connections to us great excellent deliverance appealing personality and speech construction congratulations and lastly toastmaster ahmad you are very handsome in screen where is toastmaster ahmad all right toastmaster ahmad is here toastmaster ahmad your topic was Keep your friends speaker, right? The implication of this quote was not merely that you should know your enemies well. This is the meaning of that. But 
Toastmaster Ahmad, you excellently deliver a speech with clarity, confidence, so that you gain our trust and respect of others very quickly. Toastmaster Ahmad, this is very important. Being knowledgeable to the topic is a factor, of course, but more importantly, being able to arouse passion in the people through excellent communication will motivate your audience to make, to make a move. My suggestion, Toastmaster, Sir Ahmad, is that making your voice be clearer, open your mouth, like open your mouth and animate yourself so that everybody catch your attention so that they will grasp the message effectively. You are trying to convey. Love it. You are amazing. Toastmaster of the evening, the digital magnetic interface is now yours. Oh my God. I think I'm listening to it. So, Mr. Sassi Warogoda, you, you did a great job tonight, Mark. My God, I so love it. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I love you. I like you, Mark. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Toastmaster Mark, for that wonderful topic evaluation tonight. And now let's proceed to our part two. May we call again, because we are running out of time right now. May we call again Toastmaster Sasiranda Waragoda to give us an evaluation speech contest. Thank you, Toastmaster Dave. Greetings once again to all the Toastmasters and Toastmasters around the world. So let me share my screen. One second. Right, I hope my screen is visible. Give me a second, one second. Sorry, I was facing a small technical issue now. I hope, is my screen visible? Yes. Hello? Yes, great, wonderful, wonderful. All right, so, okay. so uh, how many of you think, let's see uh, with a virtual hand, how many of you think that speech evaluation is very difficult? Okay, I see there is no hands, no hands. Okay, there's one, a few hands are coming up. Speech evaluation is difficult. Come on, come on, speech evaluation. All right, all right. Are you really comfortable with speech evaluation when you're given that opportunity? Yes. Okay, few say yes, some say no. All right. That's great, great response. All right, so may I know what do you think the evaluator's real purpose is? So let me hear from the audience. Come on, let's shoot. 
What do you think the evaluator's real purpose is? A speech improve. evaluator. To improve, great. Enhance and to motivate the speaker. Motivate the speaker, amazing answer. How about others? Uh, can I give the answer also? Yeah, definitely, sir. Go ahead. Yes, to provide value for the speaker. To provide value. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, Mr. Sasha. Anyone else? You know, when you're evaluating yes, a speech, it's like you're reading a book. And when a good book is worth your time, you acknowledge the author of that book and you share to the author how good that book is. So I think a speech evaluation is you as a listener, you give valuable feedback of how much you enjoyed the speech based on the guidelines, whatever, of those masters international. But it's like a feedback in a form of constructive. Wonderful recap. I think that was just the absolute answer for everyone's uh, answer. So that was wonderful. Thank you, Toastmaster Flores. All right. So basically, uh, speech evaluation, our ultimate purpose as a speech evaluation is to help the speaker or member become a good speaker by them improve and motivate them, motivate them to reach higher. So when it comes to speech evaluation, it is just that now, as the evaluator's role, we have to help the speaker become an excellent speaker and mention the effects that the speech he has made. Uh, okay, now, as an evaluator, now we should do the first thing as first, give a positive feedback, maybe mention the effects that a speech has made into her. How the speech inspired the evaluator. As evaluator, we can mention that and then maybe personalize that speech with you. I have seen some, quite some evaluators, they would use this technique, personalize. They would try to relate the speaker's story with the evaluator's story. For example, this speech that you spoke about really remind, reminded me of my childhood as well. So it's connecting the dots between your childhood and the speaker's childhood. And then, of course, giving those recommendations with the examples to help the speaker improve what the speaker did well and what where he could improve. Then summarize that evaluation with a nice, everlasting words that could make him do the next project or deliver a wonderful speech at the next moment. So this is what an evaluator's role is. Now. As evaluator, we actually speak from our opinion only. We do not speak for the audience. We speak as our opinion only. We speak on behalf of us. So when we are giving opinions, we must say, I think, or oh, my, in my opinion, I think, I guess, I was impressed. Maybe you, I was impressed of the way your vocal variety is. I was impressed the way of the story and how we led the twist. In my opinion, the words that you use were quite amazing. So this is what the evaluation is about. Avoid unfriendly statements. Statements such that could hurt the speaker. Maybe statements like, um, I think uh, may, the speech content wasn't the right way. So the right thing, I think the speech content should be like this. No. We should be very sincere when we're delivering our evaluation, even when we're giving the recommendation. Because as we give the recommendation, we should make sure that the speaker takes those feedback positive. Avoid judgment phrases such as that was the wrong thing to do or you must not say that. No, we cannot tell that to any speaker at all. We must tell them, all right, I think, I guess, the best way of using the words. So it's a wrong thing to use phrases such as the wrong thing to do, or you must do that. We cannot force a speaker. Avoid repetition of any, uh, let's say, recommendation or any analysis. 
be very sincere and speak to the topic. As I said before, be very sincere. This is how to say it as a speaker, as a speech evaluator. Now, during a speech evaluator, this is what we should do. Always first locate the speaker and then establish that eye contact because you have to talk to the speaker as well. When you're giving that recommendation, it's always important to make sure that you know where your speak is and then establish that eye contact because you're not giving only the recommendation to the audience, but to the speaker, especially to the speaker. And then when greeting him, you have to greet the speaker as well. Always when you're giving evaluation, when you're being sincere, try to be relaxed, smile. A smile could make that recommendation sincere and polite. So always smile when you speak and use body language when it's always needed, otherwise just avoid it. Now, these are things that you should not do when you're an evaluator. Now, remember, you're not a judge. You're an evaluator. And when you're evaluating, it is your opinion only, not the others. So it is only best if you recommend. And now, when comes to evaluation, I have seen some evaluators, they would write paragraphs in their notes. Dear Toastmaster, there is a I would do in my evaluation notes when I'm getting to evaluate a speaker, I would take the piece of paper, fold it into two, and then I would write, draw a line also between and then I would not at all write anything except the key necessary ingredients that I found amazing and the faults of his speech. And I would not write them in paragraphs. I would just write in bullet points. All right, for example, hand your, uh, his vocal variety, vocal variety, and I will uh, write the, this speech. Where in his speech, the story of blah, blah, blah. And then if he failed to use the stage movement, stage movement, and then in the, uh, in the right side, left side. So for example, I would split it into two and you have the right side, which is talking the positive side of the uh, speaker and then the negative side of the speaker on the left side. So if the positive side, I would write uh, on the right side, which has the positive side, I would write all the good things. And then the negative side, which is on the left side, I will write all the faults and things where he could improve on. And I would write them in bullet points. This is the way I would do evaluation. And I would only write the key ingredients. After the speech is done, then only I get to work. I only then deep in paragraph one to two line expressing that point. The next point, do not use harsh language. Ask Toastmasters, we should talk in great language, language that inspires the speaker. Now, as the evaluator, we should not let the speaker think that he's not a good speaker. We should inspire him to take the next level and make sure that he takes it and make sure that he says, okay, I will do another project later. And next, another point, avoid the word but. Yes, the word but is quite a very negative word. Use alternative words. Therefore, hence, by the way, um, uh, there's another, therefore, hence, the, by the way, words such as that instead of using but, because, however, these are words that could, you know, instead of using but, because but gives the negativity, uh, it bring, it's a quite negative word. So don't try to use but. Try to use words which are quite fine with, that brings positive thoughts. Always make sure that you don't deviate from the speech topic. Sometimes I have seen that when you uh, evaluate someone, I have seen some evaluators, when they evaluate someone and they try to connect their childhood, maybe their personal life with the story. And when they connect with that, they start talking about themselves, rather about the speaker. And when they start talking about themselves, they waste a lot of time talking about themselves 
and then they take time less time to analyze and recommend the speaker so always make sure that you stick to the topic and remember do not talk about yourself it's about the speaker you can just hint that okay this story was reminds me of my childhood but you do not need to go into detail and mention how it was go how how is the connection there just only need to just hear that small hint we do not need to hear the detail never comment on the speaker's personality we do not need to evaluate on the way he dressed his personality because it is not our problem we are there to only evaluate the speaker's speech now let's see it practically all right so as a speech evaluator you got the speaker on the right side of the screen he has the opening then the transition to the body the body then transition to the conclusion and then the conclusion and then the evaluator now in evaluator must analyze these five areas of the speaker how did he do the opening was the transition to the body there how was the body what was mentioned in the body of the speech the transition from the body to the conclusion how was that and how well he concluded now as the evaluator you should analyze these important five parts and then when you start evaluating you should open in your own way and then the body of your speech uh, and then when you analyze it is the body of your speech and that's where you your body of evaluation is where you have to analyze the speaker's speech the body the uh, the opening the transition of the body the five areas of the speaker and then the conclusion should be your own way how well he concluded and then give the recommendation what areas he have to improve and then the summation summation how was the speech overall and what do you really love about the speech so this is practically the small part of how speech evaluation should be done <coughs> what's the transition now as we know transition is from moving from the body to the conclusion <coughs> how effective <coughs> sorry how effectively the speaker moves from one area to another paragraph so transitions are really important how we move from one point to another point because if that transition is not there and if we don't know that out we won't know how well the speech effectiveness is there now as we are looking at the target speaker we should observe few things from the target speaker ever since the target speaker just gets on the ring gets onto the lectern or virtual platform observe what is the speaker doing is the speaker preparing it is the speaker using the speaking stage did he pause before the speech or was he using the pauses did he start immediately was he relaxed or intense because these comments <coughs> might help you you know to give a beautiful suggestion so these are just few areas where you have to observe like how the speaker is walking to the lectern before his speech and then after the speech how did he feel just observe these few things was he feeling nervous before he step on to the lectern observe these few things as a evaluator because it will really help you find out the key areas where he could improve on now this is how you could uh, put up your evaluation this is just a structure of how you could do your evaluation now how you could open your evaluation maybe you can start out with a famous quote which is quite matching to the speech theme or the speech topic or maybe you can say some maybe sometimes something relevant to the speech title maybe a saying this is how you should open up a quote or something a saying relevant to the speech title this is how you should open and then acknowledge that you greet the audience and greet the judges especially remember to greet the target speaker and then when you're coming to the second part analyzing the speaker 
Now, I have one strategy that you could analyze a speaker really well. There's a strategy called the W, the, what, it's called what, why, how. When you're saying the analyst is spot or recommending anyone, when you're giving a point, you should say what, if, for example, if you found his, the vocal variety quite amazing, what was the, you can say, okay, vocal variety was quite amazing. That was what was amazing about your speech was your vocal variety. Why was it amazing? Because we as Toastmasters should really need to know why it's amazing. So it's, it's important to mention why. Because your, your vocal variety, it was, you, it went up, you had your, uh, in your vocal variety, you went, you had your ups and downs. When you were excited, I could hear the excitement in your voice and your vocal variety and volume increased. But when you were sad and disappointed, it, your pitch and your volume went down. How did it inspire the audience? It inspired the audience attraction and it kept the audience attention. So this is how you should analyze and give out the points to your speaker. Mention what was amazing, why was that point amazing, and how it inspired the audience. Even when you're given the recommendation, I think you didn't use a stage movement. Now that was a reason. What was the reason that he didn't improve? Was the that he didn't use a stage uh, stage area? <coughs> why? Why? Uh, uh, what, um, what? What? Yes. Why? Why? Because the stage area you didn't use a stage area, which kept you constrained to one area. You could have used the stages to describe different plots of each story. And this could have inspired how it could have inspired the audience. It could bring out, a, it could explain your message in a beautiful how technique. So always when you're starting with the body of your evaluation, comment the way the speaker started. Maybe how the speaker start opened, how he moved from the opening to the body of the speak. And then analyze his speak, speech. What were the key areas that really had made the speaker, uh, made the speech admirable by the audience? For example, the jokes, the props, maybe the words, or you can say, for example, the story. The story was like a Hollywood movie. I could picture each and everything in my mind, as you said each and every word, because of each and every word that you said, it was easy for me to break down and understand your speech clearly. The jokes kept us amused and entertained. So always find out what was the amazing things that he did to elevate the speak, speech. But remember when analyzing, do not recap the speech. What do I mean by that? is that speak, uh, you know, just telling the speech, you know, giving, uh, telling what the speaker spoke. For example, the speaker said, uh, let's say the speaker said about inspiration. The speaker spoke on inspiration. So for example, if you went, okay, the speaker spoke on inspiration. He told a story on a, about a girl who inspired the audience. No, we as audience or judges do not like to hear that. If you recap the speech, an evaluator is certainly wasting his time to give his analysis and recommendation. So don't recap the speech. Always, when you're analyzing, find the amazing and beautiful points that inspired the audience, what you liked it and why you liked those points. Look at the delivery of the speech. How well did he use his vocal variety? What areas did he use his vocal variety? What areas did he use his hand gestures? What areas did he use his facial expression? And how he influenced you. And then always observe the transitions from the opening body and conclusion. And make sure, was the conclusion appealing? How the conclusion made that effect for you? So it's really important. And then before you recommend, 
tell what was a strong point that you found from his speech, the strengths that you admire from the speaker. Then comes the recommendation. Now, when we're given the recommendation, it is really important how you transit from analyzing to recommendation. Now, some speakers suddenly say, okay, I would like to give you uh, recommendations to improve. I would like to give you tips to improve. I have seen some speakers, they would use the speaker's team to jump into that. For example, if the speaker's team was inspiration. I remember one Gavalier or one speaker uh, evaluated. He said, and the speaker's team was inspiration. He said, your speech was lighting the candles of many everyone's heart. Let me help you light many more candles and it will light many more people's, help you light many people, uh, light other people's hearts as well, many more hearts. Let me give you those few tips that would help. And then when you're moving to giving those suggestions, it's always best to say, in my opinion, I guess I said, uh, if I were you, never say I recommend, I suggest, I say, or I recommend. I, uh, you should do like this. Never use those phrases. Instead say, I suggest, I think it would have been better in my opinion. Maybe, I guess, these are words that you could use to give your recommendation. It would have been better. And always, if you're giving a recommendation, maybe add some humor just to lighten up the mood. And when you're giving the recommendation, don't just tell what was that recommendation, but why was this recommendation given? Why was this recommendation a recommendation? For example, if you say your voice was too low, why was it too low? It was too low, I could not hear you speak at some certain areas. How you can improve it? You can improve it at certain areas when you're stressing points. So make sure you be very sincere when you are giving a recommendation. And always, when you give your recommendation, never judge the speaker's content. Uh, speaker's content. Always judge the speech and analyze the speech. Briefly connect with the whole speech. Tell you how well, well how the speech was. You love the opening. You love the body. You love the conclusion. How well, what was his strength? And you loved his speech. Just motivate him a little and then tell him you would love, wish all the best. This is and uh, how well you presented. Just give him that little motivation and hand over back to the contest master. So this is a common technique used. And this is a common technique. So third toast masters. This is how you should evaluate people. Make the speaker happy, sad, a little, and then happier. Remember, speech evaluation, it's all about the speaker, not about you. A good speech evaluator should be also, can be also a good prepared speaker. Because when those two match together, you find definitely that you can find out areas that you can help the speaker improve and you can improve as well. So fellow Toastmasters, if anyone has questions or any clarification, please, I'm open, uh, open up for any. <laughs> Should I have one question if I were? Yes, yes, Masumi. What the preferred if the if the testant it goes on the stage and takes the paper evaluation sheet with him, or so if, uh, the judges will be doing that also, or if the if the contestant if there is another contestant who has not the paper with him. So will there be a difference in the judging of the judges if uh, in those cases? Definitely, definitely not. 
because when you take the paper, people know that you're just only keeping up notes. You won't be reading from that presently. You're just keeping that one just to make sure, okay, that you have said each and every point. It's not going to make a big difference. You're not going to make any difference. A difference whether you take the script or not. The script, what you're writing, your notes, is just there to help you. As the time now, what I would do was, I would just only take the speed script, just for me to remember. If I forget any points, I would just take a glance and then speak up back up. So that's what the speed script is all about. That is just for you to remember what areas that you have to speak upon and what areas you can mention to the, the Toastmaster to improve. But even there are Toastmasters who just write it and then during the time they are at the isolation room, they just recap everything in their mind and they do not use the script. There are speakers like that, but it will definitely not influence the judges that this, whether you're bringing the script or not. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. Any other questions we have? Anyone? I hope. Any doubts related to evaluation? I guess not. Nobody, no, no. everybody is. Yes. I have right. a question. Yes, Toastmasters. <laughs> yes. Toastmaster Sasi, do you mind to share us your slides if it's that if it's okay with you? Yeah, definitely. I will forward it to a Toastmaster Umar and okay. uh, he can share it uh, with uh, you at all. Thank you so much. Oh, it's amazing. So I think I'm, uh, I think, yeah. I hope that's it. And I thank. Sasi, I got a question. It's, yes, uh, Toastmaster Vikram. Yes, Toastmaster Vikram. Yeah, Shashi, sometimes what happened, the speaker and uh, the evaluator not able to connect. And sometimes the evaluation re report comes another way the speaker expects. How to tackle these kind of situations? Sorry, sorry. I, 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 uh, your line move just broke up. Can you just repeat the question one more time? Yeah. I mean... Uh, during the session, you said the uh, speaker and the evaluator has to uh, speak with each other prior notice so that the evaluator have a better understanding of the speaker, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes that, that may not happen and the evaluation report that the evaluator gave is not as expectation level of the speaker. So at that situation, what is the evaluator should do? I mean, how he could handle that? Okay, for if you're taking now, let's say a Toastmaster, normal Toastmaster meeting, we get to connect with the speaker definitely. We do not know who the speaker would be and we are completely clueless. So right. when we are introduced with that speaker, we sh as evaluators, you know, uh, so one second, one second. All right, sorry. Uh, 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 yes, sir. I was just having a small background noise. So the, now when we come to that point, when we come to a contest point where we do not know who the speaker is, in that situation, it's always best to find what is that connection by not talking to the speaker, but finding within that speech. Now, when we're speaking to the speaker, when the speaker is giving his speech, that speech is what, connects us with the speaker. As evaluators, we should find that connection. Evaluators should find out, okay, these are the areas to improve on. These are the areas where I can analyze. And as a speaker, you know, that connection should be there with the audience. You know, when you're a test speaker, I would not know who would be the contestants as well. I would just go on the lectern and I would speak it up. But when you're, when you're the evaluator, you as the evaluator would not know who would be the test speaker. In that case, make sure that uh, at every prior scenario, you should be prepared because evaluation is being impromptu. That connection with the speaker, you have to connect yourself through the speech itself, not by talking with him and understanding who what type of speaker he is. You have to find out how uh, how he can speak through the way he speak 
he speaks and his speech and you can find out the way he walks and talks by when he's introduced to the lectern now when he's moving to the lectern when he's walking to the lectern you can see what type of speaker he is how his body posture is there's sometimes where you can just see the body posture of the speaker how he's going on the stage how he's shaking the to toastmaster's hand how he's standing on the lectern gathering his thoughts make a note of that because you can notify easily by his body gestures and his hand gestures whether he's nervous whether he is um, uh, prepared and from his the way he's standing and how confidently he starts to open up this, this is the way you should connect with the speaker i hope okay, so mainly the speech the speech content and the verbal and non verbal communication skills for the speakers up we have to uh, take a gist of all of it right Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster. Toastmaster Sasi. Yes. Toast, yeah. Uh, toast my question. I have a last question here. My yes. last question is that, um, how are you going to evaluate a DTM, considering the fact that he has a great experience in Toastmasters, a great age gap. How are going are going to consider his culture background something like that i understood i understood now there's a thing there's a thing in evaluation it's called whitewash it's where you don't find any improvements in the speaker and then you call there's another thing called blackwash where you find a lot of a lot of areas to improve and i have faced that situation but there is you know you have to find that area you just have to look at those key areas you know each step he takes each voice each uh, vocal variety remember you're not speaking on behalf of the audience whenever you are giving your recommendation it's your opinion it's your opinion it's not the audience opinion so if you're giving a recommendation it's your opinion and there is that any even a dtm i'm sure that you won't find that perfect dtm even i give a speech you will definitely find an area and then there's sometimes where you will find a lot of areas to improve on in that sense you must find those good areas maybe you can tell the way the story went about the speaker how he inspired and used the message of the speaker maybe the words but then you can come on into the recommendation and then slowly lay it off but when it comes to uh, finding you know the bad points about both three points when you're giving recommendation always give two or three points don't go for points and one is do not even just uh, for example the word pronunciation of some words we cannot uh, judge on that at all because oh, right. let's say uh, maybe some people pronounce this word in different way or maybe another culture pronounces different way so we cannot judge on the way they pronounce words as well because that is really going to affect not only you but you as a evaluator so yes. do not uh, even the way he dresses the way his personality is we cannot judge on that because we are a global organization and we should accept each and every one the way they speak and the way they present themselves so i hope thank you so much this was awesome anyone else i think i can last ask uh, answer one more question if there is i think there isn't so yes i guess not all right anybody is here? i think no all right so i hand over the lectern back to our vibrant toastmaster of the day toastmaster Ed. thank you <laughs> thank you so much toastmaster sasi were goda i think we are now ready to wrap the club contest <laughs> as well as the area club contest i think mark <laughs> also is ready to evaluate dt and fita and dt Car. 
on the next meeting. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for imparting your knowledge, for giving us inputs for uh, table topics and as well as on how to evaluate the speech. I think we we'll learn a lot from you tonight. And now may I call the vote counter to announce the winner for table topics for tonight. Thank you, Toastmaster. Uh, the best for the table topics uh, is uh, Toastmaster and Tasamba. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. We have two marks, huh? Same, same person. Enjoy the session tonight. So I am handing over the lecture, the, the platform to our innovative and active president, Toastmaster Omar Farouk. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Idris Sakurat. Please give a big round of applause to our Toastmaster of the Did a wonderful and amazing job. What a colorful and happy soul he is. And he spread that happiness all around this throughout the meeting. Great, great, well done, Toastmaster Idris. And we, I would like to specially thank our trainer of the day, our workshop presenter, Toastmaster Sassi Varagoda for wonderful and great presentation. We had so many things to learn from it. And we had a lot of things we have taken away from this session. And it was great for everybody. And very, so I would like to see if any uh, we have with us this Division F director, uh, Shekhar Tiwari. DTM Shekhar Tiwari. Are you there? He's not there. Okay, we can have some just guests come in. Joe. Toastmaster Joe, are you there? Okay, guest Vikram. Hey, what? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to say that this, it's been an amazing experience for me with Toastmaster and I'm looking for the other clubs also to join, I mean, to attend their meets. So I just came across your WhatsApp thing that there is a meeting. I just come up from an office call. I say, okay, let's join this call also. How is it? And it turned out to be really good. I mean, uh, good, really good work by all the team and tag team. And uh, really good work by Shashi. I learned a lot. And uh, thanks to you, TTM, Umar. I mean, it was enjoyable and wonderful. The topics were really amazing. And everything is good. Uh, the only suggestion I have, I mean, it, it, I joined a bit late. So I don't know whether do you have introduced the word of the day, uh, the idiom of the day. So I don't have any. Actually, this is a very condensed meeting special. We had just workshops okay. and all. Okay, okay. We, 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 uh, other uh, segments we removed just we have focusing on the workshops and all so okay. yes so, uh, our next meeting yeah, is yeah, on, uh, next meeting was on 14th october you that will be a full fledged meeting so we, i invite you to attend that also you will be lovely sure sure, sure. Yeah, so overall it, it was in uh, wonderful experience and i learned a lot from everyone and uh, I, I, I can see many faces around here. I mean, this is like my second or third meeting. I have seen like many people from uh, around the globe been joining and it's good. Thanks everyone. Yes. And over to you. Yeah. Most welcome Toastmaster Vikram. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We have with us uh, Toastmaster Martin. Some, you have 30 seconds to give your feedback. Oh, he's not there. Let's move on to Toastmaster. Hi, I like the meeting. Five points. First, induction program, your TM Modi. Then my evaluator, that to a table topic evaluator, as usual, that table topic master. And the last but not the least, 
our today education session sashi thank you so much for enlightening us for both the things thank you so much i learned a lot and i love the meeting looking forward for the next one thank you most welcome to opportunity get to have you with us as always keep smiling and now we have with us first master babu we have 30 seconds you can give us the feedback i think he's not with us i think he is not ahmed abdullah yes uh, this was an uh, amazing meeting i uh, enjoyed it um a lot and uh, Uh, learned a lot. The two uh, sessions on table topic and on speech um, uh, evaluation that was uh, uh, amazing. The table topic was very uh, interesting. That <laughs> yeah. uh, that was done by you, and I have you know enjoyed and learned a lot. And uh, amazing team and uh, well done. session and uh, i would like to come uh, 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 again and uh, participate thank you it's a pleasure to have you with us those master pragya any comments for us any feedback no you must be sleeping <laughs> Plus, was the division of director again? I will check if she is. Representative Mark Tiwari. <laughs> Mark Tiwari. <laughs> okay, so we, we, uh, I I will just like to take any comments from Plus Master Sasi about the meeting, how it was, and Joe? how it feel about him. Plus Master Sasi. I spoke. Joe. I... Yes, Sasi. <laughs> Sorry, I spoke like more like forty minutes above. So I think the meeting was amazing. I'd love to see everyone from the different parts of the world coming to one platform and uh, you know inspiring everyone. It's quite really amazing to really meet everyone and thank you all for that wonderful table topic session and the amazing feedback. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, Professor Sasi. It's great to have you with us always. Jo, Jo, are you there? Jo, Dumbo Sky, Dumbleski, Dum, from USA, California. Yeah. Okay. So with this, I would like to officially adjourn the meeting. It was a great, well done, great job done by our team. It was awesome training and all. Everybody. Plus, my dear Sasi, big round of applause! Wonderful insights here, wonderful inputs, wonderful lessons, wonderful, awesome. With this, I will officially adjourn the meeting. Thank you so much. Bye, bye, everyone. Okay. Good night. We can, we can, we can stop. We can stop the recording. Uh oh, thank you. <laughs> Are we recording? You forgot to press the record button. Yeah.